In today's video, we're going to be making ourselves an advanced maze game. It's going to be spanned over a number of different tutorials. This one is going to take us a little while to make. This is just one example of one of the levels that we're going to be uh, making today. What we have to do is go through and we have to avoid a number of enemies there. You can see ghosts moving all sorts of different ways. And we have to actually collect all of these blue diamonds before we can open this red door down the bottom here. It's just popped open. When I hit this trigger, it's going to blow up this boulder here so we can get through to the finish line and get to the next level. Okay, if you hit the ghosts, you will die. The coins are there just for some bonus points. Okay, we're going to have all sorts of things in this game, including teleports. We're going to have different objects to collect. We're going to have bad guys that actually chase us. So it's going to be a pretty complex maze game, and it is going to take us probably about a week to make. Okay, so I'm just going to close that off now. You've had a glimpse of what the game's going to look like. What we need to do is set up this game by bringing in all the sprites, the sounds, and the backgrounds. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. The next couple of videos are going to show you how to program the game and get it all put together. Okay, so when you do load up Game Maker Studio, you've got this splash screen here. You need to click the New tab as we're making a new project. Choose a location to save it. Mine's going to be saved in my documents in my Year 10 IPR folder. And the name I'm going to give this project is Advanced Maze Game. And I'm just going to click on Create. That will set up the appropriate files that we need. And I'm just going to close that, make it full screen. This is our workspace today. Before we can actually begin in Game Maker, we do need to copy our resources over to our account. So these are all our resources today. There are a lot of them, a lot of sounds and a lot of sprites. So we're going to need to highlight all of those and copy them. You press Control C to copy them quickly. Then we're going to go over to our folder which we just created. There's my advanced maze game folder. I'm going to open that up and make myself a new folder called Resources. Inside of that Resources folder, you need to paste in or press Control V all of those different sprites and sounds. Okay, now that they're in our resources folder, we are ready to start creating our game in Game Maker. So pop back to Game Maker, and you should be pretty familiar with how to make sprites by now. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. At the top, you've got the red Pac Man button. Simply click on that to make a sprite, and we're going to press the load sprite button to load in our first sprite. Inside the resources folder, we've got backgrounds first, which we're going to bring in later. Down a bit lower, we've got our sprites. First one is the bad guy. His background's already removed, so you can just click on open once you select him. Give him the name SPR Bad Guy. We'll make our next sprite. Load it in. It's going to be the bomb. It's got a green background, so we're going to have to remove that by checking that remove background box. And we'll give it the name SPR Bomb. Loading in the next sprite. We've got a boulder. Again, the background's already removed from that, so just click on Open. Give it the name, SPR Boulder. Our next sprite we're bringing in is the Play button. Don't remove the background from it, it's fine as it is. So click on Open, we'll give it the name, SPR underscore Play. Okay, kicking on, we'll scroll down a little bit now. We've got the coin coming in next. Remove the background from it. Click on Open. SPR Coin will be its name. Loading our next sprite. We've got a diamond. Remove the background from it. And give it the name SPR underscore diamond. Next sprite after diamond is the door. Okay, don't remove the background from it. And give it the name SPR underscore door. Okay, so far so good. We'll keep kicking on because we've got a lot of sprites to bring in. Next one's the explosion. You can see this is an animated sprite, which is perfectly fine. It's going to make our game look very cool. Make sure you do remove that green background though from it. Give it the name SPR underscore explosion. Loading in our next sprite. Scrolling down. We've got a finish line, so remove the green background from it and give it the name SPR finish. Next sprite is the gem. Its background's already removed, so you don't need to touch it. We'll just call it SPR underscore gem. 
Loading in the next one, we've got a blue ghost. You will need to remove the background from the blue ghost. We'll give it the name SPR underscore blue ghost. Blue ghost is all one word. Next up, we've got the white ghost. Oops, we will need to remove the background. Yep, I did do that. Give it the name SPR underscore white ghost. Next sprite, after the ghosts, we've got a key. It's got no background, so it's fine. Just give it the name SPR key. After the key, we've got a life symbol. Again, its background's already removed, so you don't need to touch it. After our SPR life, we've got our lock. So call it SPR underscore lock. Uh, we've got our little man, our main character. SPR man will be his name. We're getting close now to finishing. We've got a teleport coming in. So give it the name SPR underscore teleport. Oops, we don't want to add a sound just yet. Let's delete that one. After the teleport, the next sprite we've got is the tree art, our second last. Remove the background from that one. SPR trigger will be its name. And finally, we've got the wall to bring in. So right at the bottom, we've got the wall. Don't remove its background. So uncheck that box. Click on open. SPR underscore wall. And you can click on OK. Now, I just want to hold you there. I want to make sure that you have renamed all of your sprites. So they should have SPR under, underscore at the start. That just tells us that they're sprites. And then they've got a meaningful name after the SPR. Okay, if you haven't done that, you need to go back and do that now. It's very important in Game Maker that you are naming all of your sprites. I'm just going to turn these into objects now. So another painful process, but we've got to do it. So let's hit the blue ball at the top here and start turning these sprites to objects. First one is SPR, oh sorry, we're going to call these OBJ underscore bad guy. And attach the bad guy sprite to that object. Click OK. You can see your object starting to appear down in the objects folder. And next one's the bomb, so we'll call it OBJ underscore bomb. Attach the bomb sprite to it. Click OK. Next object is the boulder, so obj underscore boulder. Now the boulder needs to be solid once you attach the sprite to it. So check that solid box. We don't want our player running through that boulder. It needs to be like a wall, so it's solid. Uh, we've got our play button coming in next, so obj underscore play. Add that in, click OK. After play, we've got obj underscore coin. Attach the coin sprite to it. After the coin, obj underscore diamond. Attach the diamond sprite to that object. After the diamond, we've got the door. So obj underscore door. Attach the door sprite. Again, it's going to be solid, this one. So check the solid box. We don't want our player running through the door. Um, coming up after the door, obj underscore explosion. Attach that animated explosion sprite to the object. Then we've got our finish line, so obj finish. Attach the sprite, click OK. And we've got a gem, so obj underscore gem. Attach the gem, click OK. After the gem we've got a ghost, so obj underscore blue ghost. Attach the blue ghost, click OK. Make the next sprite obj underscore white ghost. Attach the white ghost to it. Hopefully you've got the hang of this by now. I am going pretty quick because I think you should know what you're doing. The next one is the obj key. So attach the key sprite. Another object, we have the life. So obj underscore life. Coming up after that, obj lock. And the lock is going to be solid as well. It's like a lock on a door. We don't want the person running through that lock until they have the key and they can unlock that door. Uh, next one, obj underscore man. We've got our main character. So I'll attach him to, to his object. Oops, pressing all the wrong buttons. 
After the man, we've got the teleport. Okay, so OBJ teleport. Coming in after the teleport, we've got the trigger. And finally, our last object, so OBJ underscore wall. Now, you should know by now that our wall is going to be solid as well. So check the solid box for the wall. Click OK. Now you've got to double check that you've got all the objects here listed as sprites up here. Okay, so you should have the same amount of sprites and objects at the moment. Once you've created all your objects, there is one more we're going to add in that doesn't have a sprite attached to it, and that's our score panel. So just make an object with no sprite attached to it. We'll just give it the name OBJ score. That's all we need for the score panel for now. Alright, so that's all our sprites converted into objects. Next thing we might bring in are the few sounds that we need. I think there's about six sounds we need, so hit that grey speaker up the top there next to the sprite button. Hit the yellow folder to open up your first sound file, and it's going to be the coin. So you give it the name SND underscore coin. Click OK. Make another sound. It's going to be diamond. So give it the name SND underscore diamond. Click OK. You should see your sounds starting to appear in the sounds folder over here on the left in your library. Let's make another sound that's going to be die, so when we actually get hit by a ghost or something like that, we want to die, so SND die will be its name. The next one is the door, so when we open up a door, we must have a sound, so SND underscore door for its name. Bring in the next sound. After the door, we have the explosion, so SND underscore explosion. And finally, got one more sound, which is the finish line. So when we hit the end of the level, we will play a little happy sound. SND underscore finish will be its name. Click OK. You should see your six sounds now in your library. Make sure they are appropriately named. I'm just going to minimise the sprites for a moment because so I want to see this last one, the backgrounds. Okay, To bring some backgrounds into your game you hit that little landscape picture at the top next to the speaker and load in a background. In our resources folder I've got four backgrounds for us to use so let's double click on the first one. It looks like a spooky forest so we'll give it the name up top here BG underscore forest. Loading in the next background, we've got this near eerie night scene, so we'll call it BG Night. Next background, well, looks like we're in the woods here. It's another dark one, so we'll call it uh, BG underscore woods. And our last background for our last level is going to be this purpley colored one with some stars in it, so we might just call it BG underscore stars. Click OK. Alrighty, so we should have all our bits and pieces in there for our game to work. We've got sprites, we've got sounds here, we've got backgrounds, and we've got all of our objects. Okay, it's time to start making our levels or our rooms next. So, to make a new level or a room, we press this little white box at the top with the blue border around it. Now the size for our rooms, we're going to make them 640 by 480. And the first one is your splash screen, so we'll call this Splash. Then we're going to go across to our backgrounds. I don't have a background for the splash screen, so what we might do is just choose a black. It's kind of a eerie sort of feel to this game with those backgrounds I have chosen on the other levels, so we might stick with black. Okay. Um, we might go to our objects and just put some of the objects around the page. The important one is the play button. Okay, you've just got to find a spot roughly in the center down here. It looks like it's close to the center. If I turn the grid off, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now we need a name for our game up here. And the way we bring in names for our game is actually make a sprite for it. So what we're going to do is make a new sprite here. We'll give it the name SPR underscore name. And we're going to go edit sprite. When this window appears, we're going to hit that little blank piece of paper, and that will allow us to create a new sprite. Now we're going to guess the width and the height here. We know our 
level is about 640 pixels wide so let's make a nice big heading it's about 500 pixels wide with the heights we'll make it about 150 okay we can always adjust that if need be but should have a nice big heading looking like that and you can double click on it now to edit it now what you can do is either paint on the name of your game or you can use the text tool to draw it on I don't even know what to call my name, I might call it Amazing. Okay, so using the text here, you might be able to center it. You click on this color option here to make it nice and big. I might go about size 36, make it bold. If you want, you can go through the fonts there and try and find a nice big thick font that stands out. I just saw one go past. Gil Sands looks good. Remember it's on a black background, so you want to choose a pretty bright colour so it stands out. I might go with this red colour. Click OK. Hopefully this is a good size. For the text, I might just call it um, Amazing. Bit of a corny name for my game, but we'll go with that. Amazing. Click OK. And there it is. It hasn't come up red like I'd hoped. I wonder if I can just change that. I'm not looking like it's going to let me. Oh, there we go. Just had to click on the red over there. So that's the name of our game. We'll press the tick at the top. Press the tick at the top again. And click OK. We've got that name now as one of our sprites. If we quickly convert that to an object, so we'll call it obj underscore name. Attach that name sprite to it and click OK. We should be able to scroll down to our rooms and find that splash screen. And in our objects over here, we'll have name right at the very bottom. You just need to be able to click that into your game somewhere. So it's roughly in the center. Might try it about there. That looks pretty good. Now, usually on the splash screen, you just got some bits and bobs that make up your game. So I might just put a um, wall around the outside. We could put our little man in there since he is our main character. If you want, you could put some ghosts. Oops. And that'll do us, I think. If you want to add some more things in there, feel free. But that's our splash screen. It'll allow our player to press the play button and it will take us into our game ready for our first level to be played. Okay, let's press the green tick at the top. That's our splash screen made. What we're going to do now is go back up the top and make another room. And we're going to create our first level in our game that comes after the splash screen. So we'll give it the name here, level underscore one. We'll change the width to 640 and we'll change the height here to 480. We're going to go across to the backgrounds tab next of all. And down about halfway where it says no background, I want you to select your first background which is the forest. Okay, it's chopping off most of our background because the pitch is too big for this level. But what we can do to bring this picture back down to size, we can click this stretch button. And that will just bring it down so it fits inside our game screen. Once you go to background in, go to your objects tab. And you can start placing objects in your game. So what we're going to do is start with the object wall. We need to have a border around the outside of our game so our player can't escape. If a player is able to walk outside the room, they might not come back and that's the end of our game. So we've got to have a wall closing off our game. Now it's up to you how you set this out. Okay, I might just do a few lines here and there just to try and make a little bit of a maze. It'll be something similar at the top. I don't know why, but I think symmetrical games look a bit better. That's why I'm making my maze a bit, a bit more symmetrical. You don't have to copy me here. Okay, you can do your own designs for your first level, but it's got to be simple. Okay, the player has to get used to your game. 
when they first play it. So they need to get used to the controls and get a feel for the game. So you've got to make your first level very simple. So I'm just going to add in walls, some diamonds for them to collect, and probably just a finish line will do. Okay, so there's my diamonds and walls done. I better put in my little man down in this left hand corner and I'll put in a finish line down in that corner. Okay, that's level one. It's very simple. Okay, it will get the player using their controls to move around the game and they'll understand that they've got to pick things up and hit the finish line to progress to the next level. Okay, so that's a very simple level. Let's click the green tick, level one done. Okay, we're going to go up and make level two now. Let's hit that box at the top that lets you make a new room. Give it the name, under, oh, sorry, level underscore two. It'll be 640 by 480 for the width and the height. Again, go to your backgrounds tab next, and where it says no background, click on that and choose the second one, which is BG Night, and click stretch to fit it all into your screen. Going back to your objects tab now, you can start to put your wall around the outside of the page so the player cannot escape. You will have to do this wall around the outside of every page. Okay. Now again, Keep your level two reasonably simple. Okay, as we have progressed into the next level, it can become a little bit harder, and you can bring in some new features like some new things to collect, but don't go too overboard. So what I might do for this one is I might have a little room just in the middle of the page here that the player has to enter, and in that room we're going to have some. Some things to collect. I might put some coins in here. And I might put some diamonds around the outside of it. Okay, so you brought in something new to keep the game exciting, and that's those coins. Another thing that we can bring in that's new, maybe a ghost. I'm going to bring in this blue ghost here, and I might put him over against this wall. I'm also going to bring in the red door. Now the point of the red door is it's going to stop the player from getting to this finish line down here. Okay, I might just make this room a bit smaller actually. I don't want it too big and too squished. Alright, so the player, what I'm going to make, the player has to collect all of these diamonds before that red door will pop open and they can run through to the finish line. So I might put my little man in just down in the corner there. He's going to have to work his way up, collect those diamonds, the red door will open and then he can get to the finish line. The blue ghost will be going up and down here, somewhat protecting that door. Okay, so he can't hit that blue ghost, otherwise he will die and lose a life and have to restart the level. Okay, so it's not too hard, but it's starting to bring in some new elements and a little bit of a challenge for the player. So we'll kick, uh, tick that green tick at the top. If that box comes up, just say yes. And we are ready now to make level three. All right, this will be the second last level in our game. So we'll call it level underscore three. Give it the width 640 and the height of 480. The background this time is going to be the BG Woods. Remember to stretch it so you can see it a little bit. It's quite dark, this one. Um, and we're going to go to objects here now and start with the wall like usual. Hold control and shift at the same time. Just click and drag around your room. Okay. And for this one I'm going to just draw some triangles like that. And inside of those triangles I'm going to put in some diamonds. That need to be collected. Okay. Do the same on the other side. Again, I'm doing that symmetrical look to my game. Okay, so up the top, I'm just going to have maybe a little room where you can collect some bonus points. Uh, one, two, three across, one, two, three across. Just 
worried about getting my game symmetrical here. Um, one other thing I'm going to add down in the corner here is a little room that has a red door on it. And inside that red door there, I'm going to put the trigger. Okay, you'll see why in just a moment. I'd better fill up these rooms at the top here with some coins that the players can collect. Might throw in a few bad guys. I'm going to have some white ghosts moving around here and put one about here as well. Put some blue ghosts I'm flying up and down here. I'll say here. So the blue ghosts are going to go up and down. White ghosts are going to go left and right. Okay, I might even put this, these white ghosts at different places. One there and one there. So they're moving at different locations, which will make it a little bit harder to get through. I'd better put my man in the corner here. Up in the top is where we're going to put the finish line, but the finish line is going to be boxed off. Okay, so I'm going to put in the wall, like usual. Oops. Might delete that one. There. And in this space here, what I'm going to put in is the boulder. Okay, so the boulder is blocking our entrance to the finish line. And what we're going to do is use the bomb to blow up that boulder. So basically, you have to collect all the diamonds first to get through this red door. You can then hit the trigger which will fire off that bomb, blow up that rock and let you through to the finish line. Okay, I might just throw in a few more coins. I feel like the room's a bit empty still at the minute, so put a few there. I might even throw some up in the corner there. Actually, no, that looks a little bit out of place. We'll leave that corner empty. Okay, That's not a bad level, actually. Okay, so you should be able to move through that, no worries and get through to the final level. You can see it's becoming a lot harder now. There's more bad guys and we've got more challenges with the bomb and the um, little trigger. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. So finally we'll add in our last level which is level 4. Same deal to set it up. We'll give it the name level underscore 4. Width will be 640. Height will be 480. The background we're going to use is the final background of the stars. Don't forget to stretch it to bring it to size. And your objects are over here ready to be put into your room. As this is the last level, it should be the most challenging. So there's going to be a fair bit going on in this level, I'd say. Don't forget to introduce new things into this level as well to keep the game exciting. Um, I haven't even thought about how this level could look, so we might start with our man in the bottom left corner like usual. Let's put our finish line over here. And to get to our finish line today, we're going to have a number of things blocking it off. The first step is the, going to be, actually the final step, sorry, will be a lock. You need the key to open up that lock and get to the finish line. Okay, let's add a second layer of protection around this finish line. Blocking off this part here. We're going to have a boulder again. Okay, so to blow up that boulder, you're going to need to have the bomb there. Okay, and you're going to have to have a trigger somewhere in your game to open up that section. We're also going to need a key to open up this lock, so I might put the key up there. So they can't get the key until they get through to the bomb. Okay, so we also need to have a trigger to set off that bomb, so I might hide the trigger up in that corner. And that trigger is again going to be fenced off. And to get in there, you need to get through the red door. The way we get through the red door is collect all the diamonds. Okay, so I'm going to have to have some diamonds in this game. Um, I might start working that out now. We might have some little blocks down here. Oops. do 
something similar at the top, maybe even make it a bit bigger. Yeah, it's looking a bit better. So I'm just changing my top section up a little bit there. I might even um, throw some diamonds in now. So we might put the diamonds down in this bottom section. Okay, so all those diamonds there need to be collected. We might put them at the top too to keep things looking somewhat symmetrical. Collect all the diamonds to open up that red door. Now we want to put some bad guys in here to try and stop our player from getting those diamonds. So we might put in few white ghosts just moving left and right across there and we might put in some blue ghosts I'm going to put in a few of these so it's going to be quite hard they're going to be going up and down hitting themselves on the gray walls they're going to be moving pretty quickly through there okay we're going to put in a teleport in this level okay because we have got a lot of ghosts and we're going to have someone chasing us in a moment too we need to have a teleport or a way to escape in case things get a little bit too hard. So what I'm going to do is put a teleport just here and a teleport just up here. And I'm just going to fence those teleports off with some grey walls actually. One there and one there. Okay, it's looking good. Um, so I'm going to put in the bad guy now. He's the one that's going to chase us. I might start him up the top corner here, so he's a fair way away from us. He's just going to work his way down. And he should be able to attack us if he can get through this little gap here. Now, what else can we put into this level? We've got to put some coins in, so they're our bonus point coins. So we might as well make a little section down here where you can get some coins. We might do the same up the top here. So if you'd like some bonus points, pop up there. We've got a gem here as well. So how about we put some gems in? Make them pretty hard to get. Just have to delete that ghost for a minute and put him back in. So it's going to be quite hard to get those uh, purple gems. They're going to be worth the most points, but you've got white ghosts moving backwards and forwards and blue ghosts moving up and down protecting them. So that's going to be fairly tricky for the player. Um, I think we've used everything now, so that's looking pretty good. You might have noticed too that I haven't used my score panel yet. We're going to add that in a bit later on. Okay, so I think that level is looking pretty tricky. And that's really going to test our player out now. So he has to go through, collect the diamonds to get to the trigger. Once he hits the trigger, that will blow up this wall. He has to then get the key which will then open up the lock and he can finish the game for good. There's plenty of coins and gems to collect which are quite hard, which are going to test the player if they want to get those big points in the game. Alrighty, so that's our final level done. I'll press the tick there. That's going to do us for this video. I know it's been a long one, but hopefully now you've got all your sprites, all of your sounds, you should have your backgrounds in, you should have all of your sprites converted into objects, plus the extra score object there and you've got your four different levels plus, plus a splash screen made up when you're done hit the save disk at the top we're going to come back in the next couple of video tutorials and program this game and make it all working perfectly okay see you in the next video